Hello do-it-yourselfers. If you're tuning into this video, it's part of a two-part series. Part one of this series will be linked in the description box below. It's basically a how-to instructional video installing this sink and faucet. This is the continuation video on installing this dishwasher here. So let's get to it. First off, for those who need to know this information, this is a Whirlpool. Right there is the model number. Let's pick up where our last video left off. If you happen to have any access plumbers, buddy, sticking out, take yourself a knife or something like that. Just go right around the edges of it here, nice and light. And it will pull all this stuff loose. And then all you got to do is gather it up, it up. It'll be perfectly fine. Whenever you uh, tighten these things down at first, some of this will stick out. Now, whenever you start running water down through the drain, stuff like that, some more of it might pop out and you just do the exact same thing. Number one, with the dishwasher, as soon as you get it, you unbox it. Everything should be ready to rock and roll straight out the box, with the exception of just very few things. Now you'll see here it says do not remove hose and uh basically mean don't remove this hose right here and uh you know this hose right here needs to stay attached down through here but you can pull this out you're holding this out of your cabinets you fish this thing through there because it's going to hook up to your pvc under the sink so you can remove that hose usually if you do it just right you can leave it hooked in up here up top put your hole through the top and this thing will run over to the adapted part that goes underneath the sink there's a big old nut on the inside of this thing right here, or you can turn this thing counterclockwise and, you know, take it apart if you need to, or you can simply go get you another hose to adapt to it. But first things first, you do need a supply line, which means the water coming through the wall into the dishwasher area, and you need to hook it up. It's going to be a nice long hose. You plug it up right down here on certain ones of these dishwashers, and I will tell you, you will need one of those adapters right there. They sell them down there at Lowe's, probably about $3. It's like it hooks up to a hose bib. There you go. You screw it into here. It comes down, and right here's where you adapt your supply line. As you can see, I got some plumber's tape on it right Right there, take yourself a little pair of pliers, rinse, something like that, make it nice and tight. Just don't over tighten it and bust things out of hell. Right here's the basics on the dishwasher. What you're gonna be dealing with, if you got any problems, here's where the parts are gonna be at, right here on the very bottom of the dishwashing unit itself. And depending on how high your countertops are, you know, where you're installing this thing at, that's what they got these little feet here for. You know, you can take them and you can easily adjust them, usually by hand. If they're a little bit stuck, take your pair of pliers, loosen them up. Stand the thing straight up and down, put your level on the top of it, nice flat spot. Make sure this thing's level, but also make sure it's the right height to where you can slide it underneath the countertop. Finally, I like to reroute these things a little bit so i got my supply line on the bottom drain line on top but definitely follow manufacturer's recommendation this is just how i do it i bring this supply line up through here on the right i move this one from the left to the right that way whenever i get over here to the sink i know exactly where i'm gonna run them through at shortest distance between two places to hook everything up where i need it hooked up just make sure to be safe get yourself a little non-contact voltage tester this thing's about 10 bucks reach down here and test it out it should be good to go no power on the cord and always double verify. Make sure you come over here to the circuit breaker. This washer off. You gotta wire this thing up. It's also on the ground level, so you gotta get here in the floor to do it. On the Whirlpool here. This is made in the USA, so I recommend Whirlpool. Right down here to the bottom right hand side. As you can see, you've got the place where your box is gonna go. You got your hot and your negative coming in here, along with your grounding point. There's our box, here's our cover, there's the manual. All this stuff will be mounted in together and go on the lower half of this dishwasher. Now, before we do anything else, we're gonna go ahead and cut some holes in the side of this cabinetry here. Based off how I got this hooked up, I like taking measurements from the point where these things are going to be running through the cabinet at. So as soon as you start getting that bend, that's what I'm going to measure on. I'm going to do about one foot for the supply line and about 15 for the drain line. Then I mark it on the inside of the cabinetry here. Marked in two separate locations. Now over here I got 10 and 13 marks straight up and down because that's a dead center where them lines are going to be sitting at. But personally, I don't like cutting holes right here in the dead center of the cabinet because that's going to take up some space. We're going to have to have room for P-traps and all that going down through here. The supply line is going to be hooking up at that piece of pipe right there. So I like getting a little bit further back. That way I can drill this at an angle where that supply line will come in and set right through there and hook in. And where the drain line will come up and over and hook into where the PVC is going to go. So I usually measure from this point right here and if you go back and include the baseboard you got about seven inches so i'm gonna mark the point of seven inches right there on the end and then i know where i'm not going to go past which will be right back through there in that back corner now for the supply line like i said it's going to be furthest in the back by design because of how i got it rigged up on the side of this thing the supply line itself that it's going to hook into is up against the wall the drain line is going to be where the pvc pipe comes down at and goes into the drains i want the supply line on the rear and the drain line on the front side and the drain line itself is going to be a little bit thicker than what the actual supply line is i know the supply line is going to come down a little bit further so i will say right around through here is where the supply line is going to go but right through here is where i want the drain line to go just gotta cut out those holes. Like these spade bits work perfectly fine for what I need it for and get yourself a drill. About three quarter to seven eight size for the supply line, one inch, one and a quarter for the drain line. If you don't want it to bust through the interior of your cabinetry here, you drill about halfway through and then you come through the other side, stick the tip of the bit into the exact same slot, drill back out the other way. And once your holes are done, you simply push this thing back in place and then start feeding your lines in. Make sure that your electrical line is hung up on the outside, that way you can access it here in a minute. And you take your hoses, reach back in there, and you fish them through the holes. Go ahead and remove your cabinet door so you don't damage it. And as you're scooting the machine back, you reach through here and you start pulling the hoses through as you go. Now before you go any further, make sure you take this insulation here that's supposed to go around your dishwasher, put it around the dishwasher, and then slide it in place with this on it. 
Now you can clearly see this is going to reach the supply end right here and this is going to reach right where the drains are going to go. You want to stop the dishwasher right here at the edge of the countertop. The way you can install your mounting hardware. This flips over, get inside of here, push down on it. The same tank to this side over here, there's a little slot right there. Push down on it, it'll rest right here on the top. And when you slide in there where you want it at, you're going to open this door up, reach inside there, put you a screw through each one of these holes over here. Go ahead and line it up, scoot it back in place. Push it up to the point that it's nice and flush like so. Open the door, right there's where you're going to put the screws in at on each side. You do that, verify that your electrical cable is still right here. Grab two small screws, then you simply get them started there, run them into place by hand or otherwise. That's done, make sure everything closes. Once again, that it locks. Nice and flush, everything's in line. Now we'll come down here, wire up all the electrical, and then move our way over to the drain line. In some cases, I will tell you, it's a little bit easier once you get it back into place. Just leave it hanging halfway out, and then you can reach back in here, grab your wire, your conduit, all that stuff, whatever you're doing to get this thing plugged up. Then scoot it all back in at the exact same time you're scooting it back before you decide to mount everything to the top of your countertop. But if you've got enough room, which we do here, we're gonna easily be able to reach around through there. We're gonna take these wires, and we're gonna feed them through the backside, through this little hole right here, get all this stuff hooked up. I took all three wires, and I went ahead and put a wire nut on them. That way I can feed it through the hole a lot easier. I'm going to make sure it's fished around all those springs back there and running directly beneath the actual dishwasher itself. So you can run it through this hole right here. This way you can easily see that red cap right there. And you can go ahead and pull it in, get it set in place. Now we'll go ahead and pull this wire nut off here. We're going to run our lock nut right over top of those three wires. Pulling these three wires here whenever we get this over them. The way it helps hold it in place and you can catch a thread. Simply run that lock nut down there. Make sure it's good and tight. Tight by hand works perfectly fine for these. You ain't got to overdo it. Make sure the good and tight gets you along those pliers. There's bend your wires out of the way here. Like I said, you can pull back on them like so. Grip your pliers around each end of the tab right there. And then just tighten them up that way. That way you know that they're good and tight. And it's not going to come loose on you. Perfectly fine for what you need. Make sure you separate your wires and everything. Black, your white, your ground. Along those pliers here. They twist to loop. There's a little hole right here on the bottom right hand side that's threaded. That's where you need to put your green screw at if it ain't already there. Take this thing. Make sure it gets bent right where it need that. I want to have this at a specific angle. Sorry if you can't see real good. I'm just going to twist the hook where it's up right. That's where I want it at. I'm going to push it up in here and I'm going to make sure that it's going right where that hole's going to be at. So that's going to be right there where you want it at. This should have one of these on there. What it does, you basically take your screw, you put it over top of it right there. With the teeth is what's going to go toward the back side of the box. It's your little quarter inch nut driver of some kind. Put this screw in here in between that loop and I'm going to start it by hand. Just get enough to where the threads start. Take the shank out of that screwdriver you got. And then you go ahead and tighten this thing down. The ground is good and tight. Now you got to put your white on white and your black on black. It's a little bit too long for my liking. I'm just going to come in here with my linesman. Cut that off. You just stick these things on here. You like putting your two wires together there. But I like to twist them around. That way I know whenever I put that wire nut on there, they'll be good to go. Now you got to take your wire nut and screw it on. Just screw it on there real good, nice and tight. Give them a tug, make sure they're not going to come loose. Now we're going to do the exact same thing to the hot wire. You're going to barely clip the end of it right there. You're going to stick your wire nut on, tighten it up. Bend this up out of the way and put it on the opposite side of the neutral. I zoomed in a little bit closer, but this is really tight to find space right here, and I just couldn't get the device under here to record. But as you can see, everything is nice, wired up, good and tight. Everything's where it's supposed to be at, up against the back of the box. Now we got to put the cover on. Here's what the cover looks like. There's two little slots right here on the back side. That's for these little tabs right here. So you take those little tabs, line them up, get them in place, push it over, and then you put a screw through that hole right there. All that's hooked up, all we got to do is put our cover on. You can take your insulation if it ain't already attached, just slide it in there like so. We'll take this thing, slide it straight up in there. It should set straight up and down, flush up against the floor. These little flat tabs, like this right here, got a big flat head on the top of it. You stick them inside these square holes over here, push them in place. Take yourself a flat head screwdriver of some kind, push in on it, and turn to the right. Now as you can see, everything is hooked up and installed as far as this part of the dishwasher goes. All that's left to do now is get over here, hook up all these drain lines to a brand new sink, and then test everything out for leaks, make sure everything runs right. So no matter what you end up doing to hook up your particular drain lines, I'm just going to show you the basics on how I'm hooking this one up now. I'm tied onto these pieces. Now we slide that lock nut on first. Go ahead and get your washer right here. Just slide it up there, that way it'll hold everything in place. Same thing on both sides. And once that's done, you can basically configure how you're gonna run your drain line. Finish getting this thing assembled, then we're gonna test it out, make sure nothing's leaking and all that sort of stuff. So we'll get all these drain lines hooked up exactly where you need them at and want them at, like so. I like to put the one for the dishwasher right there facing toward the back, like I said, so we're trying to conserve some room here and behind everything. Get your bare pliers, I like using the ones, got a little bit of a round jaw to them. That way it grips a little bit better. But a regular pair of pliers work too. And then start tightening up all those nuts. Make sure you don't over tighten them, just tighten them. I'll go ahead and get our drain hose for the dishwasher. Get it hooked up to the back of that nipple right there. Now that we got that hooked up, we just gotta hook up our supply line here. I'm gonna get her threaded on here. Take our little air ones. Get these things tightened up. We can take this cord. Then we can take our supply hose here. Go ahead and feed it in behind that dishwasher. 
and do the exact same thing with this drain hose. As you can see, plenty of room and space. Everything looks really good. And the way everything is set up, you got this entire left side of the sink that you can put supplies. Your dish soap, your dishwasher soap, cleaning supplies, whatever can all go right there. And there's still plenty of length on your sprayer. Aside from doing a little bit of leak testing on this, this job is done. If this video helped you out, make sure you check out some of the content linked in the description box below. You can also follow on all these other social media platforms. Leave a like, hit share, comment, let me know if this video helped you out. Otherwise, keep doing that do-it-yourself hustle.